I'm going to be showing you a design that you're probably or possibly going to think, hey, I've done this before because I do an Ursula design fairly often. And one thing that I love about this is because I do one almost yearly, <laughs> I have a really good kind of, you know, timeline of my progress. So this one is really well, fairly is. similar to an Ursula design I did almost exactly a year ago. It was my Halloween nails for 2019. So this is my 2020 Ursula version and I'll put links to the oh. past ones in the description box below. So check those out. This one is all done with Madame Glam. I really put a focus on perfecting my gel painting details over the past year, which is something that I never even really put much thought into at all in the past. So I hope all my hard work paid off. Let me know what you think and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting a thin coat of the color Celestial from Madame Glam on each of the nails. And this is a new color. This is a glittery matte top coat. So it's a matte top coat that's a color as well. So it's made to really be used as like a topper on top of a dark color. But as a background for nail art, look at that guys. Is that gorgeous or what? It makes the art stand up, but it's not just a plain background. It is like so amazing. I love that. And there's like six different colors in these glittery matte top coats that are just, yeah, this is the only one I've tried, but I'm so excited to try the others because it is so cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is the color Tin Man from Madame Glam. And I'm going to be doing little outlines and little details of my Ursula face. And this is just like the big stuff. And then with the color Blissfully Yours, which is one that's been in my collection for a really long time. And I don't honestly know if it's been discontinued or not by Madame Glam, but it is a Madame Glam light purpley color. I'm going to be filling in Ursula's face and her chest and her little, like her cheek and her ear that is sticking out the side. And this did take two coats. This is a color that isn't quite as opaque as some of them from Madame Glam, but it has this really nice feel to it. And after two coats, it is for sure opaque. But now using the color Perfect White, I'm going to be filling in her hair. And I'm leaving just a little bit of my outlines that I did with Tin Man around, you know, the different sections of her hair. Not, you know, not a lot, but if there's a little bit that kind of sticks out around the edges, that is fine. So that Tin Man color isn't, you know, very obnoxious. It's a very light gray and it blends in pretty well with the background of the nail that I use, that celestial color. So it's not that big a deal. But now using the color Darling, which is like a, like a heather purple, I'm going to be doing some of my shading on Ursula's facial features. So this is kind of where I've recently kind of been, I don't know, putting a focus on my skill set as far as getting things down is in gel painting. I've been really trying to do more, more shading, which is something I do in my regular art, like out of canvas. I've always, you know, this is not a new concept to me, but it's a new concept for gel. And gel painting takes a certain level of patience that I don't always possess. So I've got her little features that I'm starting to kind of fill in. And because I didn't re or pre-sketch in, say, her cheeks and her nose and her mouth, these are things that you kind of have to find along the way. And so when you're doing something like her nose, you have to do, you have to be patient with yourself. And the great thing with gel painting is that if you do something and it doesn't look great, before you cure it, you can just wipe it off and you can try it again. So that's such a wonderful thing to know that you have as kind of a backup plan. So now using NYFW or New York Fashion Week, I'm going to be doing Ursula's just like the start of her eye area. So she's got a couple different layers to her eyes. She's got her actual eyelid and then she has just this sort of a blue gray hue that goes above her eyelid that goes all the way up to her eyebrow. So that's the area I did right there is the one that goes all the way up to the eyebrow. And then I'm going to go back with some more of that Tin Man color, which is really a lovely gray. It's got a little bit of a glitter in it. That's another one that's, um, that's one is from the uh, Wicked collection, Madame Glam's Wicked collection. I used another one in this video later, but really pretty. And now using the color Sea Foam, I'm going to be doing her eyelids eventually. You'll, I'll get to that point. But that color Sea Foam is one that I unfortunately know is discontinued because I tried to find it on Madame Glam's website when I was kind of gathering all of my all of my colors for this because I couldn't remember for sure what the name of it was. I knew it was Seafoam, but I couldn't remember if it was Seafoam something and I couldn't find it either way. But it is a gorgeous color and it's just a light teal. That's another one that I've had for years and years and years and is actually like my sister's favorite color to wear on her nails. So I'm really sad that that one's gone. But then I have the color... Um, Sapphire City, which is a dark, dark glittery blue that I did some more details on her eyelids and then with the color Perfect Red. And I don't know if you guys took note of this when I did the perfect white in her hair, but these colors from Madame Glam's Perfect Collection, I'd say probably with the exception of Perfect Purple, but the, all the other ones are like pigmented 
to the max. And look at how wonderfully that red applies. It's just gorgeous. And then going back to her teeth with perfect white. And that's the thing with gel painting. Actually, with anything I paint, I kind of hop around and I do, you know, things back and forth. But if you have the gel color on a palette next to you, you don't need to worry that the colors are going to dry out. Like if you're doing something with acrylic paint, you can't just leave a palette sitting and have it dry out on you. I mean, if you're working on something and it's going to be a minute, sure, that's not a problem. But gel, you can actually step away from something, like have lunch and then come back. And as long as your colors aren't in sunlight, they're still fine. So I forgot Ursula's chin before. So I'm going to add her chin back in with that darling color and then with perfect black I'm going to be adding just the very top of her dress body piece legs tentacles that you can see I never know what to call that thing because um, it's like her dress that flows into her legs and it's sort of like part of her body but still a dress at the same time it's actually a really cool concept but a bodysuit maybe yeah I'll go with that but then I actually blended a little bit of white in with the color um, the blissfully yours and I'm going to use that to do some highlighting so I've got some highlighting on her cheeks chin her like jawline I guess you could say her nose for sure just highlight anything that you feel like needs to kind of get a pop out so if you if your brain thinks in 3d like mine does um, if you want something to be taller or look taller or look like it's coming out at you make it lighter if you want something to look like it's sinking into the background make it darker when you're shading something like her face so my brain like i said it thinks in 3d so that kind of helps me if i imagine bringing something out or pushing it back and then with perfect gold i added the little shell necklace and then i'm going to go back i forgot her earrings too so i'm going to be adding those with the darling color and then a little bit of the sapphire city you guys get to see the Sapphire City a bit better in just a moment because I used that on the other nails and it is so, so pretty. But now I'm going to be filling in the necessary outlines with the color Perfect Black. And the reason I say necessary outlines is there's some outlines that you really just can't avoid. See there, I made a little mistake and I just wipe it off with a clean brush. See, easy. That's the great thing with gel painting is that mistakes are easily erased. But okay, so back to my necessary outlines. So to me, outlining is kind of an important step and there's a lot of artists that don't do much outlining with black but they still outline and I love that style I think it is fantastic but I also think it isn't necessarily my style and that is you know just fine so if you I'm trying to think of um, like home of diva she does amazing portraits and she's on Instagram so if you're on Instagram and you don't follow her I'll put a link in the description box below but definitely go and follow her because her portraits are killer but she doesn't do outlines like I do and there was a little there was like a bit where I thought to myself I should quit doing black outlines because you know her work is so good it looks beautiful and she doesn't do it maybe I should take after her and then I thought to myself black outlines are kind of my thing so back to this particular portrait do the outlines that you feel are necessary if you aren't a black outline person don't do it if you are go for it either way so whatever you know your heart desires there and so now on the thumb I'm going to be doing with perfect black again I'm going to be painting a cool little tentacle design and so I've got that first layer of the color celestial again absolutely amazing and I'm just going to kind of create a swirly tentacle coming down and there's the first one and after I have that first one in place then I'm going to go through and add a second one kind of off to the side a little bit different shape you don't want to make them all symmetrical you think of it Whenever I'm doing something like with tentacles, I think if you have like a pile of worms and you just set them down, they're not going to be the same. They're kind of all kind of roundy and swirly, but they're going to be roundy and swirly in their own way. So try to replicate that concept in the tentacle design. And I know that's a weird way of explaining it, but uh, I'm from Wisconsin and a lot of people around me fish. And so when I think of something like this, I think worms. I personally don't fish, but it's still stuck in my head. And then I'm going to go through with the color Darling again, and I'm going to be, after that black is cured, and I'm going to be doing a stripe up the tentacles, not necessarily like all the way up into the tip of the tentacle, but definitely down in the thicker portion that is near the tip of the nail. So that's gonna give you kind of that panel that's on the underside of the tentacle that has the actual suction cups on it. So a little bit on each one. Keep in mind that there is an overlapping, especially if you have two that touch like the two of mine that do, so that you don't, you know, make it an impossible thing and you have one that definitely overlaps the other. And then I'm going to be doing some highlights with the New York Fashion Week again. Just that blue highlight looks so beautiful on black. I did a little bit of that on Ursula's bodysuit too with that New York Fashion Week. 
It gives it such a nice, rich, shiny black color. Instead of making it look kind of dingy, it makes the black look glossy. And then with the color Perfect White and Blissfully Yours mixed together, that same mix that I made before, I'm going to be adding the start of my little suction cups. So add those little dots going all the way up. Kind of alternate them unless it's too skinny a spot and then just do a single row of dots. And that is fine. And after that's cured, I'm going to put a second dab of just straight up Blissfully Yours inside each of the ones that are already there to give a little bit more texture to my to my tentacles and then using no wipe top coat i'm going to be just sealing up the tentacles only so i'm not trying to get any of that top coat on the background because i want that background to stay completely matte because it looks so amazing and i don't want to ruin that effect so don't try to over top coat and get everything else so just get the top coat on on the tentacles and make those look shiny and glossy and wet and after that, you can go ahead and cure it. And then on the ring nail, I'm going to be doing a French tip with New York Fashion Week. And this one is another one that I'm super impressed by the pigmentation of this color. So I've got a very nice, deep French tip going. And so after I've got that, and I tried to be perfect with my brush, I always do. And then I usually go up and I clean it up with a brush anyway, but try to do your French tip as best you can, but then go through with a brush and clean it up if, if you must. And once you're happy with the smile line, you can go ahead and cure that. And then I'm going to create a slight ombre with the color Sapphire City. So I'm going to paint that right along the smile line and then fade it out so that it kind of blends down and gives you a really subtle ombre effect on the tip. And then with Perfect Black, we're going to be painting Ursula's necklace. So this is like just the chain of the necklace or the rope of the necklace. So paint just kind of like a loop that almost mimics the shape of your smile line. Maybe a little bit less pointy, especially if you have um, an almond nail like I'm working on. And then going back to Perfect Gold, I'm going to be painting the shell. And then after that's done curing it, and then I'm going to be using Perfect Black once again. And I'm going to be doing the little details on the seashell. So first do that little swirly in the middle of the shell, then go all the way around. And then the one thing that really makes the shell from The Little Mermaid distinct is that it has those little lines coming across it on the side like that. And then just like I did on the tentacle nail, I'm going to be applying no wipe top coat over the areas I painted on top of the background only. So this is going to be the over the tip and then over the shell and over the necklace. So don't, once again, don't try to get any of that no wipe top coat over the background color because you want that to stay matte. And now on the index and pinky, I'm going to be applying New York Fashion Week to the upper third, Sapphire City to the middle, and then Perfect Black to the tip. And using a sponge, I'm going to dab, 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 dab across it to blend those colors together. So don't use the same section of the sponge for dabbing and blending both areas of of that because you're going to end up getting New York Fashion Week mixed in with your Perfect Black. So to keep a really clean ombre, make sure that you use a different section of the sponge for each area that you are you know, cleaning up. And then I'm going to use some of this jewelry gel that I have and I'm going to apply that right along the cuticle area and then down one side a pinch and then using that celestial color over the top of the whole thing. It is a top coat, so it can be used as a top coat and then it's good to go. But then I'm going to press some rhinestones into that area where I have the jewelry gel. So this is uncured at the moment. One thing I always like to do when I'm doing a rhinestone application that's a little bit simple like this is I start with the largest stone in whatever the corner may be and then get smaller and smaller as I go outwards. And then something that just makes them look a little bit more finished is applying a caviar bead in between each rhinestone. So in like the little indents around them, just kind of fill that in with a caviar bead and that just sort of finishes off the whole design after it's cured those nails turn matte i love it i hope you guys love this design as much as i do please check the description box because like i said i always think it's encouraging to see where you've been and where you are now to kind of gauge your progression when you're when it's concerned of your art and how much you've improved and it's sometimes hard to tell just from day to day so if you guys have something like this that you always check back and kind of redo some of your past designs it's so encouraging and let me know what you think and i'll see you next time bye